Hey everyone, and welcome back to Dev Mall Walking. In my last video, I took a detailed look at the first Dev Mall I ever encountered more than a decade ago, St. John's Centre. In this video, I'd like to zoom out a little and look at the state of retail and leads more generally. Let's start by taking a walk around the Merion Centre. Opened in 1964, this was originally an open-air centre, but a roof was added in the 1970s. As well as being Leeds' oldest mall, this is actually one of the oldest in the UK. Birmingham's Bullring Centre, generally considered to be England's first enclosed mall, was also opened in 1964, but takes the crown because it was enclosed from the beginning. Across the pond, there are a couple of contenders for the dead mall capital of the US. I put Cincinnati and the suburbs of Atlanta high up that list. In the UK, I would argue that Leeds is the clear choice. What's not clear at first glance is why the city has so many dead malls, so I decided it was time to investigate. The Marion Centre contains several supermarkets, with a large Morrisons acting as its main anchor, and various other shops that are aimed, and I'm quoting Wikipedia here, more at the budget end of the market. It's changed a lot over the years, with market stalls, pubs, cafes and nightclubs all calling this place home at one time or another. I was also interested to learn that it used to house Bar Fono, or La Phonographique, which some consider to be the birthplace of the goth subculture. Who needs a Hot Topic or a Spencer's Gifts when you've got those kind of credentials? Sadly, the place closed down in 2005, so it's long gone now. But perhaps the coolest thing about the mall is that it has a hidden secret cinema, which used to be where this home bargains is. I'm using the term secret pretty loosely here, because it's an open secret like the secret menu at Starbucks or in an out burger. The place was open pretty briefly and closed in 1977 after showing a revival of Gone with the Wind. It was a favourite with urbexes and cinephiles for a time because it remained unchanged for decades after closure. A perfect time capsule of a 1970s single screen cinema. Unfortunately, it's since been gutted to be repurposed as shop or office space. Despite being popular in its heyday, there's a feeling that this place never quite lived up to its potential. It's never been at maximum capacity, and some areas, like this Georgian Arcade, have been permanently closed off. Many photos from the Merion Centre back in the day have this haunting liminal space quality, which still persists to this day. I never saw a soul on the upper deck, for example, which we're walking along now. And all of the shops up here seem to be closed, despite it being the weekend. When it opened in 1964, the Yorkshire Evening Post wrote that the centre represented what every successful large town and city wanted to build, calling it Britain's most advanced shopping centre. You don't really feel that anymore, but this place can still surprise you. Until this point, I'd never seen a sexual health clinic in a mall before. But hey, I guess there's a first time for everything. And things went from weird to weirder when I rounded the corner, where I came across this display of marvellous Emmett machines, which were featured in the film Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I mean, what else can you say? It's a claim to fame that no other mall has. I hope no one out there has claustrophobia, because this little corridor and stairway coming up was unbelievably narrow. On the way out of here, we'll see the new iteration of Jumbo Records, which moved across from St. John's Centre in 2017. Somehow, Leeds is home to not three, not four, but five different universities. Around three quarters of a million people live in the city, but in any given year, up to 100,000 students live here. This video was filmed in early January, so all those students have probably gone home for Christmas which might help to explain why the city felt quiet. It might also explain why some retail and dining spaces felt so empty. 
There's a bunch of bars inside the electric press, for example, and I guess that this place might be hopping at night. Maybe with students, maybe with an older crowd. But during the day, it's eerily deserted. Let's move over to the core now for a little bit. Formerly the Schofield Centre, then the Hedrow Centre, this place reopened as the core in 2009. And it's not doing well. Leeds is the sixth richest city in the UK, but has many areas of social and economic deprivation. It's home to some of the poorest areas in the country, in fact. Maybe trying to revamp another shopping centre immediately after the financial crash of 2008 was always a bad idea, but this place doesn't seem to do much to help itself either. Leaving Christmas decorations up until mid-January is kind of a weird flex. Management previously came under fire for letting tenancy arrangements expire, giving shops just a month's notice that they had to leave before the centre was rebranded as the core. Apparently 17% of retail spaces in Leeds are empty, which is the national average, but it feels much higher in here. The third floor was supposed to be a huge food court, which is now on the ground floor instead. And owners are lucky that they managed to get a gym to step in there and fill all that space. In my video on St. John's Centre, I mentioned Trinity Leeds. Opened in 2013, it's difficult to overstate the impact Trinity had on the retail landscape in the city. Leeds has always been known for manufacturing, especially textiles. And it'll come as no surprise that much of that industry has been outsourced overseas, with jobs lost as a result. In the wake of that, Leeds has become the largest centre for financial and business services in the country outside of London, which has attracted a young and wealthy workforce with an appetite for Apple stores, indoor food trucks, fancy themed dive bars, potpourri in the mall's toilets. Gentrification, in other words. And although this mall isn't immune to closures and vacancies, it's capitalised on the changing demographics of the city in a very big way. To make matters worse, Victoria Gate opened in 2016. An expansion on the existing historic Victoria Quarter, seen here, it's brought more high-end brands to the east side of the city. Quick shout out to Van Corner's YouTube channel, which is linked below, as they were kind enough to let me use some of their footage here. This swanky £150 million development is anchored by a John Lewis flagship, which may soon be the only one in the UK. And in my opinion, it looks like something out of a futuristic space colony. The result of all this is that there are two distinct shopping areas fighting it out in Leeds. One that's upmarket and historic, another that's a little out of the way and starting to feel run down. Without significant investment, I just don't see how some of the smaller centres, predominantly on the west side of the city, can be expected to compete. As we take a final walk through the Merion Centre, past yet another Amazon locker, I want to thank you for checking out this video. Likes and subscribes are always appreciated, and you can now support the channel on Patreon too. All of the relevant links, along with my Instagram, can be found in the description below. Until next time, goodbye from the shopping centres of Leeds, both old and new.